So we're back in episode not, not nine. We're looking at minute nine. We're looking at minute nine. One thing we haven't done in a couple of episodes is inform the listeners that we welcome their critiques, their thoughts, their suggestions, their words of encouragement by way of our Gmail, which is the home alone minute at gmail.com. That's right. Dot com. The home alone minute at gmail.com. Uh, Jared, can, can I, can I leap into the mailbag and tell you the exciting news that we have from Carlos? Ooh. Do Carlos tell. opens it up with, hello, how's it going? And then he, <laughs> I'll, I'll it's pretty say. casual. And then he lets us know that the Home Alone Minute is in position number 135 in the category Film Reviews on Apple Podcasts. Which is interesting given there are only 134 in the directory. Is that a true statement or... I honestly no. saw that, got mildly excited. Those aren't, that's not a great statistic, but I was like, how many film review podcasts are there? Is that 135 out of 136 or is that 135 out of 1,012? I don't know. It's actually thousands um that said a lot of podcasts in fact the majority of podcasts that exist a little bit of trivia for you here the majority of podcasts that exist get one or fewer listeners i guess my next curiosity is if it's a lot of podcasts that are in that boat, does that mean we're 135 because we have one listener? Or are we tied for 135 with thousands of other podcasts because we have zero listeners? Mm. I like where your head's at. I would venture a guess that if we were in that tied position... We'd be a bit further down. You'd probably be in the few hundreds. That said, we can be empirical about this. And if we move even a single place forward in the coming weeks, months, we'll know that we are no longer in the mass tied zero place. So if we can get to, let's say, 130, which I think is a commendable but respectable goal. I say we do it. I don't know how, but let's do it. <laughs> I think we organize. It's time to activate <laughs> this community. This is the fight for 130. <laughs> Please. Invite a friend to the Home Alone Minute. Invite two. I won't be greedy. You don't need to invite three. That's fine. When I was a kid, I used to go to church with my mommy. And my dad never came to church with us. It was, it was a mom activity. And there's one service where the pastor had told us to leave a seat for the person that we wanted to come to church with us. And we, we spent the service with, a, with an empty seat saved for dad. And it was a very sad church service. <laughs> I was like, look at this guy who's not here. <laughs> He's at home watching football or playing golf or whatever. I appreciate the exercise. 
of making it real and having you focus on something in physical space that can help you go witness or whatever you need to do. Um, were you sad from missing or were you sad knowing that your dad was going to go to hell? <laughs> it, it felt like a, like a, a failed mission. And looking back, I'm not sure if the, if the pastor quite realized the emotions behind that gesture of just not having the person like wishing for someone to be there and they're not there. <laughs> and there's mm. really not too much you can do about it. But maybe we can do something about getting to one thirty. Please invite your secular parent into our podcast. We'll be waiting for them. Should we do Home Alone Minute tracks instead of tips at restaurants? <laughs> I've been doing that uh, ever since we started. I haven't I haven't left a 20% tip in quite a while. Everybody's getting a a little QR code with a link to our podcast. You haven't This is why we're 135. I'm out here doing the work. <sighs> Every server since we've started this thing has been blessed with a QR code. I even printed a fake $20 bill on the other side and folded it up so they'd get really excited. And then when they would unfold it, they see the QR code with the link to our podcast and they go, this is better. Menuto Nueve. What happens? Jared? From the top. From 800 to 900. Order of events. What do we got? We last left off with the pizza guy asking a policeman up Harry slash Joe Pesci if he was slash my cousin Vinny <laughs> if he was if he was just in town for the holidays and then we're gonna see that play out we're gonna see Peter McAllister talk to Harry slash policeman slash your cousin Vinny slash homeless guy from With Honor, starring Brendan Fraser. And then we're going to go over to the kitchen where everybody's eating pizza. That's more or less going to be this minute. That's the part of the movie we are it. on right now. I love it. Um, in no certain chronological order, first impressions? First first impressions? <laughs> on the 200th time I've seen this scene? Uh, first impression with this mindset. Because kind of like your preacher, we're trying to do this with a different mindset, a different framing, a different kind of manifesting. So what manifested this time for me? Yes. I suppose what, what happens is that this is the whole family coming together for the first time. Everybody's sort of been sprinkled about, scattered, uh, maybe not smothered or covered, but they have been scattered throughout this house. And now they're all coming together into the kitchen for dinner. And that's a recipe for disaster. We're not there yet, but that's, that's where we stand is, is this, this coming together. You see everybody coming down the stairs, marching to, uh, into the kitchen slash dining room. And once you're in there, uh, you can tell, you can tell things aren't going to go well. What about you? There was a moment in this that I forgot I thought a lot about as a kid. There's a, a cut where Kevin is running down the stairs at like 100. And he's like, pizza, pizza. He's responding to pizza the same way I responded to pizza when I was eight years old. He is responding to pizza the way that we still respond to pizza now. Let's be honest. He comes around the banister and 
almost immediately goes from 100 down to, let's call it 60, into the kitchen dining. Mm -hmm. And I remember that being noticeable as a kid. Like, it wasn't cut in such a way that that would have, you know, erased time in some way. It seemed a bit jarring. And I was reminded of that on this viewing. That he's like full speed ahead coming down the stairs, but when they cut to him coming into the kitchen, he's he's more... Yeah, paced. something about it just seemed jarring to me the first time I saw it. There's a hallway there that I think could explain the the slowing down. Yeah, and and honestly, I didn't go back and watch it three or four times on that specific part just to analyze that because I didn't really want to ruin it. So there is something potential there that could explain it by like the laws of physics. But I just remember it being noticeable as a kid. Here's a, here's another thing that I noticed is that there's a stairwell in their kitchen slash dining room and the front of the house. This is a full house style double stairwell situation. I'm so glad you said that because that's the only other one I can think of that has that. While... Family Matters has kind of a back of the kitchen stairwell that can kind of go up as well. Full house. It's it's right there. And I, I never quite understood the the layout of that home. In its simplest terms, it's a layout that is so large it needs two staircases. It was only uh recently that I visited uh a, a friend's home that they had moved into uh, not too long ago. And they have two s staircases that go to the upstairs of their house on each, each kind of on each side. And I was like, oh, so yep. you're rich. It's good. It's, I, I felt really proud of them that they have a full house style double staircase situation. That's how you know. That is one of the many indicators. Yeah. Did you congratulate them? Uh, yeah. It's hard to do that without saying like, oh, make a lot more money than I do. But, uh. You can't say things like beautiful home. Oh, two staircases. Is it this possible is that they just save more money than you do? They're saying it with the size of their house. No, no, save. Oh, they're, oh, like, they're saving more money. They, oh. they might not make more. Oh, yes. Yeah. They might possible. also be further leveraged than you're comfortable being. Sure. Yeah. A lot of, lot of factors going on. A lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities. Yeah, the McAllisters have two stairwells. Can I give you a quick trivia question? Ooh, I like it. Kevin walks into this kitchen, and we're a little out of order here, so let's let's make sure we don't forget to back up. But Kevin enters, and on that stairwell, there's something hanging on like the banister. There's something hanging on like the on the railing of the of that staircase, and I think this was. Maybe the first time that I really noticed it. So I was wondering if you picked up on it too. I'm seeing like just vague, just kind of a, a blur of like a beige backpack or something. Yeah, it's a backpack. It's Is like it? a bluish, grayish kind of just regular old school backpack. Oh, okay. The, the way you were saying it, I thought it was something that we see later, but. Oh, no, not, not, nothing, nothing interesting. It, it would be lovely if, if that were the case. Because I, I think there's a shoe on the staircase as yeah, well. Yeah, there's like a, a couple shoes. Like a single yeah, shoe? Yeah, Can we talk about Kevin's shoes we real quick? Because we didn't talk about them in the I'm Living Alone bit. We see them a, a bit better in this scene. What, what's, he, what's, he, what's he wearing? Some high-top sneakers? Oh, he's rocking some Adidas. Ooh. They're like quite nice. They're coming back. Nice. Um. So speaking of money, we'll go back to the beginning. Because somebody owes this pizza guy one hundred and twenty-two fifty, and maybe this kind of goes back to what we were talking about last episode, where my perception of the guy is dumb is maybe just in the sort of acting and like his motivation. Like he's asking for money, but he does not seem to have a sense of urgency at all. Like he is fiddling around. Is, he is absolutely fiddling around. He's he's going against company policy. Like how many other pizzas are in that car that are about to be free? No, this uh, this is a singular 
this is a one stop drive. Does he do a hub? Like he always goes back to the shop and then goes back out? I think if you've got a 10 pizza order, that's the only place you're going to. That is fair. That is fair. But it, like I say, he, he doesn't seem to be in any sort of hurry at all. He asks for the money on cue, but he and Joe Pesci, after they've had their little powwow with Peter, they just sort of stand there. They really do. It's bizarre because it seems like that's the end point. You've just talked to the owner of the house and he's walking away from you. Buzz Buzz grabbing him around the shoulder and saying, come on, Dad, let's eat, is enough to convince Peter to walk away from this uniformed police officer and a worker from whom you just took $122 worth of pizzas from and have not paid yet. Right. It, it's it's tough to say whose fault it is because he asked for it once and then was not aggressive at all. And maybe both he and Harry are just sitting there in awe of the fact that the owner of this home could have offered a police officer anything and he offers him booze. I love the way Peter says it, though. Did you not not would you like some eggnog? Did you get some eggnog? Expecting someone to have already accommodated these guests in his home. It does feel more natural, right? Like there's just this buzzing about and he's like, you're welcome to it. You know, whatever's out there. We have a spread somewhere. Did you get some? I think there are cookies, maybe. I'm going to start doing that when people visit my home. Hey, did you get some uh, Mr. Pip? Right. Did you get some water or something? I'm not going to offer anybody anything ever again. I'm going to ask them if someone else has gotten it for them. Did you get some eggnog? Certainly you knew you could have helped yourself to whatever you can find in the kitchen. You're clearly on the clock. We've got some milk trying to get rid of it. Ooh, we're, we're a minute ahead there. So last bit on the pizza police which is a great band name. Um, It's marginally strange that a cop is coming around and checking houses and protocols and just making sure that everyone's taking the proper precautions, but it can be explained away. What can't is why he would explain all of that in front of the pizza guy. Yeah. You think like this would have been like a, a private because, conversation. Let's be real. Crime is economic for the most part. And a dude who's not even getting paid for his pizzas <laughs> is a guy in need of some cash. And you're like, hey, we're going to be gone for a while. <laughs> Don't be fooled by our automatic timers. <laughs> Feel free to break in anytime you like. I like how... Um the the automatic timer is really the only helpful detail that Harry gets out of this interaction. And it seems like in later scenes, he's sort of narrowed down when the automatic timers go on. He's sort of mapped that out at least. But Peter's got two things that safeguard his house, automatic timers for his lights and locks for his doors, which is... About the best you can That's, do these days, right? That is the bare minimum. <laughs> so <laughs> that is so Harry goes back to Marv and goes, Guess what? All they have are locks on the doors. Well, yeah. So I think there are a couple things. One is he's ruling out any advanced alarm system, uh, but also just who's in the house and how long they're going to be gone sort of thing. It's a bit of logistics. When are you leaving is really the answer that he wanted and he gets it later. And another big piece is he is casing these houses, right? Like he's him being in there and kind of seeing what's going on and seeing where things are going down. That helps him understand the value of what's inside these homes. Where are all the red and green items I can steal? Where is the green chaise lounge? Where are the cash hoards? 
the very fine jewelry, the VCRs. Stereos, VCRs. When Kevin goes from 100 to 60, he sort of side-eyes both the people and the pizza in a yeah. look of judgment that I can relate to. I, I think this was maybe the first time that I really picked up on he's looking for cheese pizza. Well, and that first he's, table is full of nothing but olives. Right. But that's... that's One could say that he's casing the joint <laughs> for cheese pizza. But that's his motivation, right? You want yeah. cheese pizza and all you're finding are olives and sausages, green peppers or whatever you're seeing on the pizzas. But this is the first time really I saw him like sort of, he's like peeking over everybody's shoulders and kind of like looking, he kind of like looks under a piece of pizza. He kind of like lifts <laughs> one and sort of, is there cheese pizza under this regular pizza? Poor guy. And we're, we're not there yet, but it is a little bit of an overreaction from everyone on, uh, you know, what his, the, the bullying we'll say, but that bully is so strong that he forced his father to step away from a law enforcement officer <laughs> to go eat. <laughs> the way Buzz, it's like, come on, dad. Like you've, you've, you've had a rough day. It's, it's family. It does feel time. like the last line of another film. Not What's one that? in particular, mm. just. It's very last line energy. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Dad. Let's, Let's see. Music swells. Zoom out. Which I think. I mean, it's a it's a it's a motif that carries on even through Home Alone too. Is that for whatever reason they trust Buzz? They look to Buzz as like the one that they believe, the one that they trust and count on. Confidence, man. Is it oldest child? Is it firstborn? I think energy? it's midwit energy. So you are smart enough to recognize that there are people dumber than you, but not smart enough to recognize much else. So you just crest the corner of a ton of confidence. Unearned, it may be, but it's there. Yeah, but everybody buying into it. I accept it as part of Kevin's motivations. He gets dumped on uh, unjustly. Everyone falls for Buzz's feigned confidence or charisma or his shenanigans. They they don't notice, you know, him bullying Kevin uh, a few minutes from now. It does does seem a little unbelievable. That Kevin's the only one ever calling Buzz out on this stuff. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're a bit more optimistic. My my cynicism kicks in a bit here because I see what seems to be like myriad versions of Buzz every day who <laughs> have completely unearned confidence and everyone just follows them. Yeah, this is just the way the world works. Yeah. Okay, I'll accept that. Um, we see the twins not twins again uh brooke and fuller what are the questions that each of them ask uh brooke asks if santa claus has to go through customs and fuller asks what time they have to go to bed and brooke doesn't get an answer at least from what i can hear it's a smart question from a little kid though it is it is and i feel like that's I think that's disappointing on Leslie's part. <laughs> what I love about it is that Brooks heard about customs. Yep. Let's assume this is her first international flight, mm. but she's heard about customs and she has questions. She knows what customs are. And now she's applying that knowledge of customs to her knowledge of Santa Claus. I can imagine Leslie saying, okay, we're going to land in France and we're going to have to go up to a desk and they're going to put a stamp on your passport <laughs> and you're going to have to tell them that your father didn't steal any <laughs> or, or, or silver, <laughs> silverware. <laughs> put it in your purse. Is that real crystal? So she's, she's been, 
she's she's got enough knowledge to start getting curious. And it's it's just it's just a nice funny line for someone about to take an international flight. Fuller's is expository. Yeah, well, hers is 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 pretty real. You know, like you 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 see kids when they when they move or when they're spending the night at grandma's house. It's like, does Santa know I'm here? Like, that's number one priority. So it's pretty realistic that she would ask that question because, like you say, she's just she's just been clued in. And number one priority is, all right, how's Santa getting to me? But yeah, so uh, what time do we have to go to bed? The answer is as precise as Frank ever is, early. Early. <laughs> early. And notice that they're leaving at 8 a.m. on the button. They're leaving the house. They're leaving the house at 8 a.m. This is not an early flight. Even pre-9-11, like if you're leaving your the suburbs of Chicago to get to O'Hare at 8 Yeah, o'clock. in universe, they're in Chicago, right? Yeah. So they're not like actually out in Winnetka or wherever, but they're, let's say, 45 minutes from O'Hare. Right, right. L- later on, I guess we can do the, the, the timing of it because they get into that as they're trying to leave. But in fairness, if they have to leave at 8 and everyone is theoretically going to start getting ready at, you know, 6.30 or 7, why are they having this big late dinner? Why are they not having dinner at 4.30? Yeah, yeah. Who's in charge here? And is it Buzz? Buzz ordered the pizzas. So quick review of the facts here. The pizza guy still hasn't been paid by the end of this minute. There's a uniformed police officer who hasn't gotten all of the information that he's asking for. And both of them are still presumably at the front door. They're just standing there. All the while, Kevin looks through pizzas. And under pizza for more pizza. A lot of prepositions related to pizza. The pizza prepositions. The pizza preposition gang. The pizza preposition pals. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So that's minute nine. Do you have anything to plug? I would love to get an email at the home alone minute at gmail.com. So just someone can send you an email if they send it to the home alone minute at gmail.com. That's where they could get in touch with me personally, Sonny drummer of the home alones okay america's maybe best band about the movie home alone do you have anything to plug jared yes i would really like there to be a more robust mailbag going forward so i'd like everyone when they get a second to get in touch with you personally via the home alone minute at gmail.com and we've got t-shirts what else what else do we have? We don't have anything else. We have a podcast. Please tell your tell your non-religious parents, two friends, to that you've saved a seat for them at the home alone. We don't want easy listens. We want you no. to bring in someone who's unfamiliar, the big guns. Commitment. We want listeners, we we only want people who have never heard any podcast before who are confused mm. by the technology who yeah like the format is just foreign to them yes we want people who think that they have to log in at a certain time that is being broadcast do we want people who think they can talk back to us uh yeah yeah we want people who are sending email to home alone minute at gmail.com and not the home alone minute it's the Home Alone Minute, but we want the people who are going to sh- struggle. We want to earn that 130th place in the Apple Podcast film review rankings. And how rewarding that will be. We want it to be completely new podcast listeners. Quick Venn diagram of podcast virgins and people who have Apple Music. There are plenty of people accidentally paying for Apple Music. Do you have to pay for Apple Music to listen to podcasts on Apple Podcasts? 
I don't believe so. But I think you have to have an Apple ID. Well, enough people have iPhones. I really should know more. How many people have iPhones out there? There's like 500 of them, right? There are 135. We need them all. We need every iPhone user. Can we push the Home Alone Minute into people's libraries, U2 style? Who do we call about that? That seems like a great idea. Home Alone Blue Edition. (laughs) Who got that U2 album and was like, awesome. (laughs) 